So uh, Gavin has uh, come to join me today uh, on Grill Country. And uh, he had, Gavin had seen the video that Sherry and I did with Paul Kingsnorth uh, about the machine and had some questions that he wanted to ask me. And so I invited him to come on and to ask the questions that he wanted to ask. Great. All right, Nate. So what is the machine? So what is the machine? So I think this is very important. This, this is like something I don't think Paul is quite explicit enough. I'm going to give you my answer and okay. not what I think. Paul. I think this is something Paul isn't as clear on in his writing. I think there's Paul has a tendency to confuse the machine with technology itself. But to me, the idea of the machine is more, it's the technological system. And it is also, it is, uh, it is the, it is the process of evolution that is on the horizontal only at the same time. I think it's both of those things. And I would also say that it is the ever, in, the ever deepening consequences of the fall. I would That's say it's all of the, I would say it's, <laughs> it's all of those things. It's essentially, it is the, it is the, um, the human paradigm that is based only on the human, which actually becomes inhuman because to, because it imagines the human to be disconnected from the whole, disconnected from source and eliminates the vertical aspect Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned the, the horizontal and the fall. I think I'm, I'm understanding like when you, when you talk about the system, what comes to mind is I've heard people say like, you know, the cotton gin could, it could be said that the cotton gin contributed towards slavery or something like this. Does that, does that thought, how does that thought kind of mix with the idea of the machine and the technical system? The cotton gen increased the demand for slaves, which probably was a like it's a that's something that I learned. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not, an, I don't know really, I don't really want to like it's talk not, about it's, that. That's not something I don't really, I'm not really an expert on that, but that is something I remember learning in history is like that's certainly an argument that's made. Well, I could change it to a different example is like the invention of the car or the airplane, like as a system, these, 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 I call them tools, but you're talking about it seems like you're talking about how. They they had these costs. Y'all were talking about costs, and some of those costs might be like how the family is able to move apart and, and not live side by side, right? Is is how does that mix in? Yeah, right. There's unintended. Yeah, exactly. So it's like we create a we create a tool, and we think it's going to do something, and then there's all there's almost always some sort of like unintended consequence or trade off. But here's the thing, and I think there's a tendency to think that, well, the creation of the tools is the pro the creation of tools is the problem. And and to want to just like go back to like a, a earlier time, a more primitive time, a more innocent time. And they're ten so 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 people who like talk about the machine can end up thinking that the solution is to just break the machine right like 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 the like the saboteurs like the, the, the word saboteur uh comes from uh a a a, a, a shoe that's called the sabot that would they okay. would that they would literally put into the cogs of the machine right so to so we so one of the solutions is to just break to to break the machine and and by attempting to go to go backwards to, to live in a way that we think people lived in some imagined past but if you look at like the way Alul talked about technique he was very clear that technique is not the same thing as technology that technology is one of the byproducts of deeper systems of techniques the fact that our technology ends up 
having these unintended consequences that always goes awry and ends up having harms that we do not see is because of because of a deeper orientation within us so the only real solution is would be a would be a spiritual solution but i think that that spiritual solution can improve people who have been transformed trying to conser- trying to conceive a different paradigm yeah. and I see, like, I tried to, I tried to get to this in the conversation with Sherry and Paul, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to turn it into an argument. So I would just want, so I, I let it stay focused on the areas where we agree. But I, t- one of the things I talked about in that conversation was, I think it is my very strong intuition that our sense of scarcity is actually part of the machine. And you can and I think that one of the ways that we can see this is as part of the machine is the way that Jesus exposes it in his miracles. And when Jesus sa- says things like ask and you shall receive. But even that gets like it gets that gets weaponized into this sort of like prosperity gospel kind of message. That right. is also that's a, that's a subversion of that by the machine because the the machine like it doesn't only it, it's not only related to technology it's the way in which we can take any good thing and then have and then and end up twisting it and perverting it. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, I guess so. Here's my bias, right? I'm a um, I'm a tool maker, and I've believed in tools and technology to so that like this is like a part of who I am like a deep belief that I can create tools that can be helpful. And, and recently I've said something like um, a tool maker is someone who loves their enemy because I can create a tool that can be used by my enemy or my neighbor, right? If I create a good tool. So it's like, in a way I've, you know, I, when I, the technology itself, it doesn't, it's, it can be used in ways that I agree with and ways that I disagree with, but, and then you combine that. So you mentioned um, the fall. I I would just connect that with like, we're ignorant. Like when you introduce the tool, we are ignorant of all the ways that it could be used and the kinds of fruit it can produce. Right. I've always kind of associated sin with ignorance. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're kind of like, and we're, and we, there's no way for us to actually go back. It's, but, so there's just this uh, territory we have to navigate where we have we have tools. We've been using them forever. Like even the language we're using right now is like a tool, uh, which and all of this, even the beliefs that we are talking about, they're, they're all connected to this tool, this essential tool, right? That could be used in, in a way that you agree yeah, with. Yeah, no, yeah, with. right, yeah. So it's, yeah, I, I see it as this, um, yeah, I didn't like the, um, the notion that we should just like pull back away from technology and try to pull back away from technology completely as a, as a solution. Um, like it seemed like maybe you could retreat, you know, like I guess my personal opinion is that you could retreat so that you can try to find balance and you can recognize where, you know, the machine, for example, is, has, you know, maybe corrupted, uh, your life. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have to retreat permanently, uh, right? However. Right. Well, that's a, this is like so. What a, what a, what Alul actually says, and and he lived. I mean, he died before like the, the the internet was a thing, but he used the telephone as an example. Like so, Alul said the solution to technique, which is like his ver like Alul's idea of technique is really the same the same idea as what Paul King's North is talking about in the machine. Okay. Um, although I think like Alul is very clear on the distinction that the technique is not tech. It's not the technology. Okay. It is, it is, it is, a, it is a system out of which the technology comes that is like deeper than just the technology. So he says that the, the, so the way out of technique is awareness of technique 
So he said, he said, he said, he says, you don't stop using the telephone. You just, you're, you, you have an awareness of like what the meaning of my participation in using this is, is. Yep. And when it has unintended co costs, you try to be conscious of what those un unintended cons costs are and adjust your relationship to it in, in accordance with that. So I can get behind that. <laughs> right. Yep. So it's like, you know, it's like, okay, here's my smartphone. I, I have a smartphone. I don't not own a smartphone. Right. Um, and but, we're, using, we're using this technology. And right I'm using now. technology to talk to you right now. Right. And our the conversation I had with Paul and, and Sherry was was enabled by technology. It could not right. have happened without technology, right? Paul lives in right. Paul lives in England or right. in Ireland. He's English, but he lives in Ireland. Right. Uh, he lives in Galway. So, like that would have been an impossible conversation to have without technology. And technology does, in fact, enable pretty marvelous things. And I think one of the one. So I think. The thing a you, lot has, of it you comes hesitated down to, to use that you you would hesitate to use the word miraculous instead oh, of marvelous. No, I, I, I uh, miraculous. Uh, <laughs> I just want to throw it out there because of the Arthur C. Clarke idea. You know, technology yeah. can be, it can be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I might want to go there in a minute, but okay. let, let, let's 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 avoid that for now. Um, because I don't know, like to me, like the whole category of supernatural is a mistake because I don't think that's how the world works. Yeah. Um, and which might sound weird, given a lot of the things that I talk about might seem a weird thing to say. But I think all of those things that I talk about are all just part of nature. OK. Um, and uh, so. Orientation toward nature is part of this. Like it's actually part of what causes the machine to be the machine and why our technology oftentimes goes bad. And it's it, it has to do with what the motivation is. I would say that for most of our history, we have created tools Let's let's talk about it in turn because this gives. I think I like the idea of creating tools as a way to talk about it because it, it shows you how broad it is. So you're so it, it shows that you're really not just talking about technology as such, right? You're talking about the activity of human tool creation. The other way, the other reason that's good to talk about it that way is you see how old the problem is, right? And how like just going back in time isn't going to solve it for us. Because it's right. always because the problem's always been there. I, I can use language in a way that you will disagree with. I'm sure I can, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So, so here, so, so, th I think that the different, like, what makes what makes technique technique is it's related to it is related to the fall. Because when we create tools that exist to increase our power over nature, then we are feeding technique. We are feeding the machine. Because we are, I, we I, are supposed would, to be, we are supposed to be in relationship with it. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, there's some thoughts that come to mind some that where I can sure. push back. Um, so I could give the example of we can go into. Um, yeah, we, we yeah, the question for me is when how are we? Uh, I'll, first, I'll say the thing I'm against, like I don't want to use my power to uh, benefit myself at the expense of other humans. So as I put humans up. Uh, in inside of this nature uh, category, but then I, but that's that's important, Gavin. That's okay. actually important to put okay. humans inside the nature category is absolutely important to not making a critical mistake here. It's right. because when we think that we because if we think that if we consider ourselves not a part of nature, then that is the beginning of seeing it go wrong. And right. that is something that I think the, the, 
the Christian worldview has mostly not ceased to feed. Say that, say that another way. I, I didn't get your point right there. That the it sounded like you had a criticism. Yeah, of you will you will hear <laughs> you will hear a lot of Christians talk about uh, about dominion as if it was a good thing, as if that were the proper understanding of our role. Okay, and when you say dominion, it's like uh, humans above uh, above uh, everything else in nature at the top of of uh, like the hierarchy of Ru what is in nature. R ruling it. Ruling. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here's how we know that's wrong. How does Jesus rule? Does he rule by seizing dominion? No. I actually, I actually, I had kind of a revelation recently I, that, you know, if I were to pick a ruler for this world, I would pick Jesus, right? Like, I don't actually believe a lot of the stuff that's in the corner, but it's a, just a very practical question. If you could go around and pick a ruler for this world, it's like, would you pick Jesus or name your other character? Who would you want to be the ruler of this world? It's like, I, I just had to throw that in because, yeah, the, the, there's a way of being right, there. The one, the one who is willing to give all of himself for the sake of the all. Right. And and there's a way, like there's things that Jesus would not do or it seems to me that Jesus would not do, right? There's just ways of being that where people, yeah, it's good to, to try to imagine Jesus as kind of like a standard of measurement by which we could uh, try to figure out the proper way of being inside this, this uh, inside of nature. But I, I, I wanted to push back on, and this is where you can maybe develop some more nuance. I wanted to push back and talk about how, like, it seems like technology itself is, it's always, a kind of imposing some kind of power on nature, whether it's your house and your air conditioning system, or if I'm going, I'm doing controlled fires out in the woods. So we don't have wildfires. You know, we have these, we're essentially like we're attempting to make nature more predictable, which, you know, when we're doing agriculture, we're making nature more predictable and it ends up that predictability. There's always costs and benefits, but there's some benefits to, to, to try to trying to, uh, make nature more predictable. Right. Like, so in a way it is. So I see that as having power over nature. Um, and that's why I just made the distinction between like where I, I, I just, I love humans. And so I, when I try to have power over nature, it's for the, and my goal is for the benefit of humans. Right. Sure. Yeah. So that's the yeah. only, that's kind of the nuance that I wanted to just, point out and and push back because when you say something originally my mind's just like well, what about these edge cases or you know this phrase that, where it's just maybe you could i heard something like it's, it's it's perhaps bad or wrong or dangerous that we try to have power over nature and that's where i just wanted to make sure i flush these kinds of things out you know and try to develop more nuances about these you know these subcategories within nature and how they should relate to each other right yeah. So let me let me. Let me and we might have some disagreements. I mean, it, I no, I, I do. I, I do think. I, I think that that it, it, there is something that is her, inherently disordered about having to hope to have ha, trying to have power. Well, it depends. I mean, the word nature is such a. Um, <laughs> It's a large category. It's like it, it, when we it, talk about it, climate change. It's like, what is the yeah, climate? It's huge. I, it's what does it not have? What is right. not nature? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that. What do I? I want to. I want to think about how I'm using the word when I use it. Yeah. And and this is just also there's just when language. I, we use language to try to say something that's helpful, but you know. Language is hard to actually describe the entire thought that you have with language and for you may to receive the thought you have. So that's why it's good. That's why I like pushing back on these things. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's about, So there's let, let's talk let's let's use the let's use that let's use the house as an example. Okay. Right. So you you need to 
be protected from the ele- you and your family need to be protected from the elements in order to be able to live comfortably and thrive and have human flourishing. There's costs and benefits with having a house. So you can, you can like, if you, I think a good way of looking at, if you look at, if you look at like different styles of architecture, this can be a way of understanding how you can be doing the same thing and it can be different, right? I think you're going in the right direction. So you can build a structure that is just like, I'm going to, the structure itself seems to announce like, I am human and I have, I have, I am exerting my power over you nature versus you a, a structure. You could have a huge castle. <laughs> or, or, or you could have a structure that like almost seems to be part of the natural environment yet affords the protection that you need. That is not operating against nature to dominate it. Might be a hobby. But is seeing your but but is seeing you as like as a human being as a part of nature that is that is creating something in order to meet a need that you have without doing it in a way that merely asserts your power over your environment. But you're you're being you can try to be more considerate. Um like there's there's ways of being where that's why I said the solution is spiritual. Because it's not like, again, I, I, as I said at the beginning, I'm not suggesting that we stop making technology. Right. Right. No, right. I'm like, Bar, there's a reason why Barfield says that, like, the way, the way to final participation passes through modernity. You can't, like, there's no going back to original participation. And there's no going back, like, the idea that we can all start living like the Amish is not going to happen. Right. But it's not. It, and th- this is where I'm really interested and in. it might become boring at that point. It's like it's like how should we behave properly with the technology we have? Right. That's right. where exactly. I, that's, like, that's my focus. No, like, that's he, exactly right. Which is which is which is which which and a little would agree with you because that's why he says it's the awareness of technique. So I don't hard, stop using the hard. telephone. But I'm aware of the I'm aware of what the cost of a telephone is. I'm a, I'm aware of the fact that it's not always good for me to pick up the phone and talk to somebody when maybe I should go to see them in person. Which of course that problem is even more pronounced in our age, right? So it's like, right. okay, use the internet to communicate to people like that you couldn't. But if you're if you're texting, you know, if you're if you're if you're if you're sending a it, when I'm sending a text to my wife who is 30 feet away from me and we're both working from home, that's probably stupid. (laughs) And I've done that. (laughs) But let me be clear. I'm not a saint, nor am I able to perfectly practice like everything that I'm talking about here. But I think, but again, I said the solution is awareness. So we have to talk about it. In order to enhance our awareness, in order to have a healthier relationship toward it, right. so that so that we can have, because I like in my position, it, it's the machine, it's the machine or technique that is bad, and not the technology itself. But Paul is still right to say that technology is not morally neutral. I think that like technology is not, it's not always just. There are some technologies that are just evil in their very conception and origin and should be seen as such yeah just point out your best example my best example of a technology that's simply evil yes please abortion pill abortion pill so and then i would so one thing i try to do is i try to be a a, it's literally created to destroy life yeah i've so this is so any technology. Okay. And actually, here's let's 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 there will let's be people who it. disagree with you. That's okay. All, let's that's look at you know. any any technology that does that does not and cannot serve human flourishing in any way, and is and and or is destructive to the world that we live in, is evil. So it couldn't be used in different ways. Yes, like for example, okay, but we you're saying like, that there are technologies. That Paul, Paul used the used example. Paul used the example of the atom bomb in our conversation. 
And I would say the atom bomb is evil, but the nuclear reactor isn't evil. But also an atom bomb. And here's where it's just, I think we all have different strengths and weaknesses. And so there's a question of, can you imagine how an atom bomb could be good? Right. And that's where different people have different abilities with their imagination. And so there are people who can imagine how an atom bomb could be good. And so like, for example, I'll just, there's an incoming, you know, maybe incoming object about to hit the earth. Maybe the atom bomb helps. Right. Yeah. But it seems like the atom bomb would not even, let's like, it seems like there are, there are better solutions than the atom bomb. There might be. Like, it seems like to me, you can easy, you can, it would be easier to defend like some sort of like hypersonic missile defense system for something like that, as opposed to an atom bomb. Yeah, well, the, I mean, that's the thing is, as tech, so tech, it's like the technology is discovered. Because it seems like releasing that, re, even exploding that radiation in the atmosphere would be a t- pretty bad thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, well, it, it, it depends on where is the context, right? So and that radiation is being released into the atmosphere naturally all over the world and the, and the solar system, the universe. But I guess my point, my point is about, there's, there's a, well, the first point was that there's a, an ability to use an imagination. Here's a second point is, well, sometimes you, you only have the tools you have right now. And yes, we need to figure out how to improve on those so that, because some tools are more dangerous than others. Like, like maybe a tool is, is, can be used in a certain situation and it's the best tool we have at that situation, but it doesn't mean that there's not a better tool that we could invent, you know, that could replace that, you know, for example, that. High right. And, and there are tools and, and, and Gavin, let's talk. Okay. So, and there are tools that are appropriate for people that are at a certain level of maturity, maturity and development that may not be, I agree. But that may not be appropriate for a less developed person. Now, and we can take that. And, and uh, this is obvious to us when we're talking about giving power tools to a child unsupervised we would all agree that that's a really awful thing to do very dangerous right but i think that when so if it it perhaps there is uh a conceivable uh uh future humanity that is capable of taking something that is merely dangerous and irresponsible for us right now and using it in a positive way that's I think that's conceivable, right? Because that's big. Because again, it's about the orientation, right? So, and that's where I, I try to bring it back down to us as individuals. We have these tools right here and right now, and we're figuring we're we're fumbling around trying to figure out how to do this. Like, I, ho- I host a live stream sometimes, and it's like. How am I supposed? How are we supposed to do this? Because this is something I've never done before, and I can't. I can't go ask Jesus, you know, in the Bible of how, exactly how am I supposed to? When am I supposed right. to move someone into the back office? You and know, our history uh, is to just like uh, to let our intellect run ahead of our spiritual maturity unchecked. And we we have a bias to perhaps like an error. And not only and, that, yeah. not only that, Gavin. This is this. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's what what technique is done. Right, the scientific the scientific worldview, which is is the is the, is the ultimate culmination of, of technique, it is to bracket out the vertical dimension entirely, so that we don't even have to worry about. So there, we don't have to worry about the consequences here's my or concern. what our spiritual maturity is because we've bracketed that out of the picture entirely. So here's my yeah, here's my concern is that you can have that kind of secular community that's bracketing out. The vertical. My other concern is that you you'll have the non secular community that's bracketing out, you know, the technology and the innovation. That's I my agree. Concern. And then you just yeah. nobody's I, doing I, it the right way. I agree. <laughs> which is this is why I, this is why I after the conversation, it's like I thought the conversation with Paul was a good conversation, but I think that I think that like Paul and Sherry by temperament and inclination are uh, a little more of the dial it back kind of people, but we need those voices. Yeah. And, and, and I thought, I think Paul is an amazing, I thought Paul was an amazing person. I enjoy his writing. It was a great conversation. And obviously I adore Sherry and we need people like that. I am not, that is not my orientation. I'm actually okay. like, I, I used to manage a 
I used to manage a computer repair shop. I've always been uh, interested in technology. T technology fascinates me. Um, I read science fiction. So I'm a, obviously a very different, different, have a different orientation there. Right. So the, and the, the, we need people, we need those different kinds of people. Yeah. Like in dialogue about this. So uh, we're, so I, so the reason I wanted to talk to Paul is like, in terms of his diagnosis of the problem, like to me that the fact of, of technique and the machine or the machine, whatever you want to label it is, is a, that is an undeniable fact of our reality. So, but the, but it doesn't, but it's, that's just a diagnosis. Right. What we need is not a diagnosis. I think I think all of us are aware of the of that diagnosis well, on some level. Yeah, or, some level. Or some we level. see it easily once it's revealed to us. The problem is, is that having the diagnosis doesn't help us. Right. We need to have, it's we easy. need to have a we need to have a treatment plan. It, it's actually easy to talk about the problem. It's a yeah. little harder right. to figure out an answer and embody it. And so, like, right. you're actually you're actually. Like you are kind of like groping around trying to figure out how to do this. You, you're so exactly you're right. speaking to people who, you know, maybe are you're saying they're important and their perspectives are important. Um, you know, I'm I'm on the I'm on a totally different side than you know Sherry and Paul. And then there's for me there's a question of like you know I have an idea of what of the of a way to try to bring that vertical and horizontal together so that you can you can actually figure out. You, you can begin to answer the questions and, and solve the problems. Right. Like that's right. What, and, and that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> right. And it's but, like, and here's the thing too. I think like Christians, a lot of times, like they forget that we're part of the equation of like the marriage of heaven and earth. That is the end story here. Yeah. We're part of that equation. Like it's yeah. not just something. The eschaton is not just something that happens to us. This is where you and I was worried. It, I was worried. It, hap, it requires our, our our cooperation with God is required for that result to arrive. Yeah, this is where it's dangerous. Like there's dangerous beliefs, and so if you if you're not concerned with kind of bringing heaven and earth together, and you're looking forward to a heaven after you die, you'll have, you'll be like predisposed to behave a certain way, right? Right. So, so right. I, I, we're I think we're on the same page there. This is where yeah. we're also on the same page with, for example, Jacob, right? I think Jacob's yeah. interested in that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have <laughs> Jacob and I have never well, we thought we talked once. Jacob showed up on my live stream and well, this is this is how I'm interested in how we navigate these situations because you end up with characters like, you know, so many different kinds of characters, and Jacob's one of them. And it's like uh, I want to I want us to figure out how to be productive so that we can try to unite heaven and earth. Like I want us to right. Well, and Gavin, I would say for me, for me, like lately, one of the things that I have been, and I, I, I noticed for Vicky's been talking about a lot, a lot like this lately too. But this is something that I was like, even before I heard Vicky talking about it, that I was kind of like, was becoming evident to me is that the structure of truth itself is dialogical. So, it's. It's neither it's it's it, to think of truth as either subjective or objective is wrong. But both subjectivity and objectivity are part of the equation. And we can only arrive at. We can only arrive at real truth through the personal through personal dynamics. There, there's ways that you don't arrive at it. <laughs> so, like, I, like I, I right. like I, when I, whenever you're on Grimm's uh, uh, channel video, I, I, I talked about like I like trying to identify what's not God or you know what's not what are yeah. that's easier for me, right? Um, right, right. Because right. because I can then say, oh, I, at that point I can begin to say, well, you know, maybe I'm not doing it, or it looks like those people aren't doing it, right? Uh, they aren't doing the thing that would allow for the discovery of truth, right? Which is people are mostly not, people are mostly not doing it. Like and even it, when they're like, it, like, if you say so like, if you already know where the conversation, if you have an idea of the next question that, that you should be asking, like if, if I'm thinking Nate has, is not asking the right question, 
then that's not that's not the proper way. <laughs> That's uh, so like that's something I. Well, I, no, I, I mean, it, there is. It's possible that you might have some insight, like as to where I misdirected, where you could help me out by asking, like, so you like it could be possible that there's something that I'm over. That's not necessarily always wrong. Uh, here's okay. let me, let's say there's something that like you see, there's something that you see that I don't see, and you're no, trying to you, figure you out. You you're trying to figure out how 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 you can well. Let's say you have a fairly high confidence level in this thing that you see, and you're trying to help me see it too. And the right way to go about it is to help you help someone else see it too. It's not to like, I see this thing, therefore it's right. You must agree with me. That's not like the right thing to do is to try to figure out a way that you can reverse engineer whatever the process was that that allowed you to see the thing that you can help create the same experience for that person so that they come to it on their own and so that can involve in fact you pointing out that there that a question that i'm asking is is operating from some sort of mistake and you can try to illustrate that but you have to, it has to be done it has to be done done very gently and in the right way there's a, there's a, but there's a there's like some preceding steps whereas like so you can try to be a teacher you can try to be a student you can hopefully try to be both and if so at some point you have to you have to kind of figure out if i'm actually interested in being a student and what i've noticed is there i'll interact with some people who aren't actually interested in being a student and so then they're just they're they're totally focused on um, trying to teach me, for example. And then so then they have an idea of the next question I should be asking. Not and so if I'm sitting there trying to teach and they're trying to teach, there's nothing happening at that point. If we're both just only focused on teaching. Yeah, that's entirely right. And this is like that's like uh, you know the, the 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 Jordan Peterson rule about assume that you have something to learn in a conversation, right? That's so that problem. means that we haven't figured out how to do that in this corner, like all the time. It's, <laughs> no, we don't. No, it's okay. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. To, it's okay that we don't always get it right. Yeah. But it's that self-awareness piece. Like, I, I, like this is where language is as a tool. Um, we can have this self-awareness that if we are always trying to teach and we interact with someone else who's trying to teach, it's, it's not going to be productive. It just can't be productive at that point. Right, right, right. I got some. I got some interesting. I got some good feedback from Sam. You know Sam. Yes. Okay. So I got some interesting feedback from Sam. 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 Sam said he really liked the conversation that we had with Paul, and the reason that he liked it is that he thought we brought some things out of Paul that he hadn't seen in other conversations that Paul has had, and I think the reason that was able to happen is that everyone in that conversation thought they had something to learn. Yes, I, I agree with that. So, and that's why the conversation went that way. And I entered this conversation today. It's like, hey, I, Gavin probably has some insight that is going to be helpful to me. And I have found this conversation so far to be very helpful. And you're helping me. I, and I, you might, I do have, um, and I was actually already kind of thinking that I wanted to do an additional conversation because at, even though I think that conversation was good, I don't think that this, 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 concept this idea is far from exhausted and there's a lot more work to be done on it and i wanted to engage with some other perspectives i mean we, we might actually be talking about one of the most important things <laughs> i do yeah i have this sense that we're talking about something that is actually like almost so important that it's impossible to articulate how important it is right. like it it is it is a really critical thing and so I talked, I reached yesterday. I reached out to uh, my friend James Cortides, who has the Roosters Crow podcast. Do you know James? I don't know. Okay. So J James, James has uh, his channel is called the Roosters Crow podcast. Okay. Um, he's Orthodox Christian. He does a lot of Orthodox Christian stuff, but he also does some stuff with like, he has an interest in, um, in psychology. So he okay. does some stuff sometimes like talking about like, uh, the commonalities between uh, uh, Orthodox Christianity and certain and certain schools of psychology and things like that, 
but his his he's a friend of of David Gornowski, the uh, Flor- the Tampa, Florida area radio personality. I don't know right. if you know David. I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm so, just, yeah, I'm just, like I actually have rules for myself, and so that the how well, I give my attention, I, I give my attention. A right. Certain way. So I've so involved. yeah. So D- David is like has it, David. He is his primary lens of analysis is Girardian, and okay. he's kind of like a, like a libertarian christian anarchist leaning sort so i think he's like more he has certainly he has a lot of what i would say chris are christian anarchist principles he's a he's a pacifist he's or he has a and he has a anti-coercion orientation but he tends to like in, to come down on a political on, on a side in the political wars more than i do there's a certain political orientation to what he does that is, 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 is more explicitly political than what I, but I, but we have a lot of overlap in our thought and he is very pro, he is very pro technology. Like he, as a Christian, like he thinks that like, essentially that there, that there, that, that there, there is a Christian way of doing technology that would result in a different paradigm. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, want to have the same conversation that I had with Paul, with David and James, because right. that'll be a very different conversation. Because I think that, again, I think that David will recognize the, the presence and the influence of the machine. And I think we'll probably will want it probably will incline to also tie that to the supernatural evil that we describe as principalities and powers um, or the, and, or the prince of this world. Like there's like, there's a way in which like the automism of the machine is the world when it just runs according to following that automism on the horizontal, but that there is a way to have a, a vertical opening a vertical breakthrough. I mean, what's interesting is that if you stay on that horizontal, I think you end up suffering, and the stuff su- because we're designed to, to to seek, you know, that vertical. And so it's it's like it's to me, there's kind of an inevitability, perhaps, it's, or it's it's there's a there's a push and a pull in that direction. Even if we try to, even if people try to stay on the horizontal as individuals or a society or culture. So, I mean, I, that's kind of my hope. Like that's what I, I see. Think- <laughs> no, I think that's good. That's good. And I think that's uh yeah, I think like the, the sense of inevitability is um that's a good positive positive note. Um and I think I think that um there can be I think too much doom saying is definitely not 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 good for the is is not, is not good. Um but I think that I would say that like like Paul and Sherry like share that same optimism that they're just they're just they're just more skeptical about technology playing a role in in that and I think I think they're wrong I think technology does have to play a role in it and I think that's one I think that's we can't and, and there we can't undo modernity like we just we just can't um right. that we've been led to where we are for a reason and that we need to pass and we need to pass through it yeah. into I- a different, in, in, into a different paradigm. And that the, and the, and the problem is the problem is with us and not with the tools. Ultimately. I'm with you. No, I'm glad, I'm because of, although, although I still will maintain that we certainly can create evil tools because of the problem with us. Right. Yeah. They, well. The, yeah. I agree. Uh, <laughs> I agree. That I think that. So one thing I've tried to do is I try to say I'm tech support. Like I'm trying to help with technology. And that's how I'm. That's kind of how I've um, just defined myself or the role I've given myself. And so yeah, I'm. I try to ask questions like, well. There's questions like what are, what are the tools and techniques, technologies that we could use to end the um, 
being more productive, more helpful. And then I, I ask myself questions like, well, what if, you know, you know, what if the Catholic church had a, a an IT organization and tried to run it properly and produce good tools with good rules on it, you know? And, and I'm just saying Catholic church as a stand-in for an organization of religious people who want to build useful tools that are, can be used in good ways. Right. 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 And that, that's the thing that's, I think that's missing. Yeah. You might actually, I, you might, you might actually find, uh, uh, David Gronowski's, uh, uh, program interesting. Cause he does, he has a lot of like, he spends a lot of time like talking to people like, on, on the like cutting edge of like, you know, what would be considered like fringe science that are trying to, that are trying to imagine ways beyond our current paradigms. Okay. And I, and you've, you've mentioned imagination multiple times in this conversation. And I think like, this is like, this is the key, right? And this is like, it's not an accident that Barfield claims that imagination is a truth bearing faculty. Because learning, like, the proper use of imagination as such is part of the solution. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, can you, if you have an imagination, you can actually use it in all kinds of ways, right? It's a, right. If you have a good one, or if you have one that's like a powerful tool that's somehow was a gift. You can still, it's like a tool. It's, you can still use it in ways which are helpful or harmful for yourself and others. Like it's, yeah. 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 And I, I even hesitate to say my imagination. Like, yeah, there's a part of this. I'm getting, I'm getting to the point where it's like, I, I am, I am everything except me. Like, I don't, it feels like, um, yeah, the imagination was given to me or the, the, the skills or the tools or the wealth or whatever, the strengths and the weaknesses, whatever it was given, that's all, that's, I'm starting to see the world that way. <laughs> instead of the, uh, instead that, oh, it's, it's all, that it's me or that I have somehow have responsibility or some, like that it's, I don't know, I'm getting to that point. I know that that's not for everybody, but. <laughs> no, no, yeah. that's, that's, no, I, I, I kind of like, just kind of like was just, that's, that's, that's good. I think, I. Uh, how how did you come to, to to like? Have you always felt that way? And if you didn't always feel that way, mm -hmm. what has resulted in you feeling that way now? Yeah, I definitely did. I was definitely like self centered, arrogant, egotistical, and still wrestle with that to some degree. And I'm, I don't, at some point, I battled spirits and started seeking like the good one. And started trying to get, um, yeah, I'd really asking myself, well, what do I want? And really uh, figuring out that, oh, I want, I want peace, for example, or I want, and you know, the, the the things I wanted would end up closely aligning with, you know, for example, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so through that process of just, you know, encountering spirits and trying to say, no, not that one, as I sought out the one that, that felt right, mm -hmm. uh, ended up finding the, uh, the one that could be described as the Holy Spirit that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit, or not even, it's not like I found it and it's a, I got it, or it has me, it's that that's the one that I want, you know, that's the one that I'm seeking at each moment, perhaps. And then, so you, you, you managed to see the right goal. I managed, I basically would take my imagination down paths with the wrong spirit and mm -hmm. I would realize, oh, that's not good. That's not good for me. It's and because I would just follow it through and say, like, if I do this, it leads to this and this. And so, uh, yeah, it's connected. So to you God. would imagine what the outcome would be. So right. you'd use your imagination to like, if I follow this spirit that's wanting to inspire me right now. Right. 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 That's an interesting word too, right? Inspire. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. right. So <laughs> and we are conspired. And I yeah. think I and I think we need to live with the consequences of, of of what that word suggests. So if if I follow this spirit that is what that is desiring to inspire me right now, or I'm desiring to be inspired by it, whichever the case, however you want to uh, construct that, 
I'm going to imagine what would happen if I did that. So right. you don't have to actually like. So, so that's you, the forward you, looking. You delay. So you delay your action. And you're using your imagination to foresee what the outcome might be if you went with that spirit. Yeah. And when I do it, sometimes I do that well. And then also sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go with a spirit and try it out and, and allow it to fail. Right. And then learn through failure. But, uh, and okay. then, so those are the two processes. And then at some point, just to type back in, I realized it's like using my imagination, I was able to realize and see how the, the people in my life have been so, you know, to use the word, you know, um, inspiring, not even recognizing how it was inspiring. Right. It was just, and that's, and then realizing that, Oh, it can, it can, it's like a combinatorial explosion of all the inspirations that led to me. And that's the way it is for everyone. Right. It's so yeah. How, how much free will is there? You know, there are, there's definitely, I'm making choices, but even the choices that I have to choose from that are on the table are limited by all the, previous inspirations from everything else environment and people just moving throughout space and time so it's and the, the, but the reason there's reasons why i considered that and it had things to do with like a you know how, why did why do people behave the way they do or why am i thinking the way the things i'm thinking and uh, so and then noticing the fruit of the holy spirit as well with if i believe that i'm the one that's in charge then all of a sudden there's a there's a lack of humility, uh, maybe even a lack of patience and a lack of gentleness. Right. It's interesting that you like 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 you ask the, that you ask yourself the question, why am I thinking the things that I'm thinking? Because I I think that we kind of just we talk about we talk about our thoughts in a way sometimes that doesn't show any any reflection on like where that what what their source and origin is and it, it's it's a lot of times they're not it, it's very unclear to me that we are the source and origin of our own yeah. thoughts yeah where do dreams come from <laughs> like i've just had right. dreams throughout my entire life that have taught me and it's like where did those come from how did i have dreams that teach me how did i meet yeah. entities and dreams that teach me <laughs> right like, yeah that right yeah <laughs> i still have i had i had a dream last week that i'm still trying to figure out like i uh i dreamt the name of this artist well i didn't know he was an artist when i dreamt the name i just had the name in my head ernst von ernst von nischke and or nesky and uh he and so it's like I Googled the name because yeah. it's like, why am I waking up with this name in my head? Right. <laughs> so it's not it's not really it was it's as I'm waking up. So it's not it's not part of the so it's not really part of a dream because it's as I'm coming into consciousness. There's like literally this name is like. And there's a thing that brings audible. you out of consciousness like you didn't bring yourself out of consciousness. <laughs> right. Exactly. There's And, and there's, it's and it's like I can. I see the, I can see it and hear it sort of in my head, this name. And it's like, okay, well, what's this about? Like, I've no, I don't know this name. And so I go and I Google it and it's like, you know, he's an artist. Okay. As soon as I saw his art and the, the images that Google image is, is feeding me of his art is it's mostly maritime stuff. Like, uh, look like coastal town scenes, sh ships, things like that. And okay. he, he appears to have been an artist who operated on first in Southern California and then later in West Palm Beach, Florida. He was born in 1900, so he's long dead. But as soon as I started started seeing images, it's like, I'm like, he painted Jesus. I just knew immediately, like even though I'm seeing maritime images, it's like, oh, I know this guy painted Jesus. And so I keep scrolling, and sure enough, I find a newspaper arc article on him from 1961, with, with him having with a, him in front of a of a painting that he's done for the Salvation Army, because apparently he was um, a big supporter of the work of the Salvation Army. 
So he did for free, he donated his labor and did a, a portrait of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane for the Salvation of Army or for the Salvation Army. And uh, and it's just uh, and it's not it's not. Here's the thing is like. I don't didn't find his work very good. Right. So it's like kind of kitschy and not very good. We're including the portrait of Jesus. Also not good. So it's like, I saw him figure out. It's like, why is, why am I having this information that there's no way of like, I've never heard this person. Like I would never heard of this artist. I don't know. Like I have no idea. The only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of, if I want to try to explain this rationally is that I did <laughs> grow up. I did grow up in a, um, a coastal area in Washington state. And I actually spent some time of my childhood in a town that was actually like a beach town and like a fishing town, beach town. And like my uncle like did have like a lot of that kind of art. Like he liked that stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I saw a signature (laughs) <laughs> on one of my uncle's paintings like in early childhood that was just like maybe yeah that's that's the, but but that's like but it's it was a even if that's the case it like it's a weird thing to wake up remembering yeah. and yeah, it's not I, I wasn't and, and you would think that if that were the case if we were based on the memory of like that i would that i would remember seeing the painting right that there would be a, like a, a memory of like seeing and not just like the name from the signature it's right. weird to like only remember that detail i get it, I get it. so yeah. it's a, one reason why paul king's north sticks out in my mind is because i've been when i joined like into the corner i uh, karen wong introduced me to a guy named jason delport and mm-hmm. jason delport had been given these uh the, the idea of this this giant structure in a desert that can extract moisture out of the air and create essentially create rivers and it could provide clean water for like 80,000 people or something. It's, it's this huge thing. And I've worked with him like almost every Friday for two, for two years. Uh, he, he lives in Tasmania and he, at one point in our talks, he had mentioned Paul Kings North and because, and he thought Paul Kings North was interesting because he was an environmentalist who um, converted into a Christian and so yeah. we, we were interested in trying to connect with Paul because we wanted to show him this tech that could be used to help with climate change that could be put in a desert that can terraform deserts and create, be the foundation for cities. And, you know, could, and then, you know, uh, Jason even wonders if this isn't like, you know, part of revelation, part of. But see, know, this is, to me, this is, an, this is an anti-machine idea. And yeah. here's why. And because people think this. I'm telling you right now, like this, and I said this to Paul, and Paul Paul wasn't really going there with me, but I think this is right. I think the very idea of scarcity feeds the machine. Because if we because scarcity feeds the idea that we need to be at war against each other and against nature. Like scarcity drives that mentality. But you're talking about a technology that says that 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 is like, let's assume that scarcity is not a thing and i just have to use my imagination to imagine how to bring the plenitude that god has provided so that we can access that plenitude and it's not, and it's not even my imagination it's the, the right the, right an, exactly an, an angel <laughs> inseminated an idea into a brain at a certain time Bingo. within the story you know right <laughs> right. That's why that right. Because the thing that we call our imagination, when it is properly oriented toward the vertical, can receive things from above. Right. And it's- that's and that is and I think this is the solution. It's like we so it's 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 a it's a matter of redirecting the gaze, right? Redirecting the gaze Amen. from the from the horizontal toward the vertical, but we but that doesn't mean that we stop doing human things. Like creating tools. Yeah. And I think Jason would even say that like it wasn't even that he redirected his gaze, but it's almost like he was just pulled toward it 
like so there's you know like there's the thing about you know, Pharaoh's heart was hardened it's like like how much of it is is how much of it is us choosing to redirect our gaze and how much of it is the story pulling people toward a the the proper way to gaze you know right 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 yeah. right but there still has to be like you still like there's I mean, still we're, had to we're be encouraging some, people to he had to participate properly. he still had to participate he still had to be an active participant though because it's like when like when he he, he could have like felt that pulling and just been like but you have uh, things that? you're obsessed That's with, right? You have so, you, you're obsessed with some things, and you have strengths and weaknesses, and it's like, I don't know. I've been pulled, and yeah. like, I, it's, there's some things where it's like, like right now, I can't just say, oh, I'm going to ignore Jason Delport because my whole life I've been thinking, okay, peace on earth requires clean water, um, and I've, I was interested in these machines with water. I've had dreams about them, and now I've get connected with someone i build them a website we have a website and it's it's like i can't just ignore all of a sudden say jason i'm done with you right the only way i can say jason i'm done with you is if all of a sudden we come in and and learn oh the physics doesn't work right <laughs> we haven't figured that out we've had many smart people be, be unable to prove that the physics can't work so for me i just god created me in such a way that i'm not going to be able to no what i was suggesting though is that jason could have just rejected the idea out at the outset right so like i i understand this he would, say, he would say the same thing that i'm saying is like he was just he couldn't have rejected it got it just it's, it would be an impossibility for him to just reject it <laughs> it's almost like he has no it's almost like we have no free will in some situations right <laughs> but and yeah that's that's kind i get of I, I get I, I get what you're saying i get what you're yeah. saying he wouldn't say it's his right idea like right. it was like yeah. i didn't I didn't ask to dream about the name of some exactly some early 20th century beach artist. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I still don't know why I did. Right. You, you, you mentioned it right now, you know, it's who knows if that's why or not, but it, it, it came into your mind that you was a recall. There was a, a, a remembering. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I don't know exactly why we are the way we are. I like to believe we all, um, you know, we all have strengths and weaknesses and we can cooperate together and we're, we're all different. We can celebrate our differences. And so that, it, I like to imagine it's a huge orchestra that's slowly coming together towards something very beautiful. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. It's interesting that you say orchestra because like one of the, like, this is, this is why, like, this is what I point to when I talk to when I talk to other Christians about like why I think this like simply passive attitude of like waiting for the Jesus rescue mission is not quite not quite the right way of 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 envisioning how the eschaton comes about is I'm with like you. it's the singing of the new song. It's the singing of the new song in Revelation. Like the singing of the new song is a human participation in the bringing about of the eschaton like that's what it is that's what it's pointing toward like we have a part we have a part to play i like the song you're singing <laughs> i mean i'm <laughs> okay. agreeing agree with i'm agreeing with you all right well let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and end on that though i think that's okay. a good note to end on it was good talking to you gavin hey i appreciate we'll, we'll it. talk you, we'll talk again sometime soon thanks for joining me on grill country all right thank you